Well, hello guys. Welcome back to Thursday's video here at Barham Engines. What we got going on today then? You've seen me do loads of these long studs in the Cosworths, but what's the real reason that we do it? After educating ourselves more on these BDA engine codes, we get in amongst this one and see how much the damage is. Right, mate. Guess what I'm doing? Uh, long studding. Long studding a Cosworth block. Done this many a times, haven't we? Yeah. We've had the... Uh, a lot of them have been a success. I've had one or two that we've had a couple of issues yeah. along the way. Done videos on that in the past, haven't we? But that's all, that's all past now. We're gonna and sort it's of, for a reason, it's not... For a reason, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, hopefully, this one is a bit more of a success. Yeah. And um, as I say, done hundreds of these now. Um, problem is when you're long stood in these cozies, you never know what the casting's like down in the base there. So you sort of... Yeah. Um, you can run into a couple of issues. The, the only thing you've got to do is just be very careful when you're centre drilling down the bottom. So what's the point of doing the long studding then? So the point in the long studding is, first of all, we do it, we can do it for, to rescue the block if it's cracked. So on these Cosworth blocks, as many blocks will be that are of this age now, especially that have been running boost, where the head bolts bolt into the surface of the block here. Yeah. Um, you've got sort of two parts. You've got the base of the block, which is down here, and then you've got the surface of the block, which you can see there is probably no more than eight or 10 mil thick. Right, um, yeah. And then you've got these lugs here, which are literally a cast-in lug that go probably an inch, inch and a quarter deep. Um, and they have a thread in which the head bolt goes into. Now, over time, with obviously head gaskets blowing and heat cycles going through the block. Well, and the fact they're nearly 40 years old. And people think that it's absolutely fine to run four or 500 horsepower for them at that yeah. age. What tends to happen is it pulls the block up. Um, so the cast, so, so the cast. Those sort of areas there yeah. tend to get pulled up by the force of this bolt sort of in the thread. They do indeed, yeah. So if you look at this block, this is a perfect example. You look at this block that hasn't been faced. You can see areas where it started to blow. Um, yeah, so if you, these dark areas. Yeah, you look at the clear line there where the, um, the fire ring will go. You see these dark areas where it's all starting to blow and go a bit discoloured. And also, um, you notice round the bolt holes, it's all a little bit cleaner. This is almost as if they've been pulled up to sort of meet the head face and seal better there. Exactly, yeah. So not so much. What we tend to find areas. is if we put this on the grinder um, and do like a tooth out cut, you'll find that a lot of the time it cleans up around these areas first. Yeah. So probably it's some, sometimes it can be up three, four thou around that area. Yeah. Which one obviously is not ideal because you haven't got a flat block surface, but what tends to happen, even if the block's been faced, the structure of the cast iron is shifting and then eventually what happens is it cracks over into the water jacket right yeah. through these so lugs. Basically through that, from that bolt hole into that water jacket hole. Exactly. Uh, which, I guess, what happens then? Coolant comes up the head bolts or? So, the main reason, it's not really to do with the coolant. What it's to do with is obviously the crack that goes into that water jacket from that lug. Yeah. That's then took the stress. You've got the, you can't, when you bolt so this, you the bolt, bolt it into, up, it yeah, it, it just out. opens up the thread basically. Yeah. Um, so the crack opens up. So right. what we do, drill through there, drill and tap down into the base of the block down here. Yeah. Um, put a long stud in with a, a seal at the top. So you see this 17 mil cut out here, five mil deep. We've got a nice blue seal that goes in there yeah. to stop the coolant coming through. So, yeah, so it's almost like there's material beforehand, there's a thread right in the top of here. Yeah. And basically what you do is drill through that thread and then come out the bottom and end up to the base down of the block. Here. Yeah, that's got it. You put the thread at the bottom of the block rather than on the face. You do. Basically. That the base of the block is a lot thicker. Yeah. And obviously it's had years well, of it's not like, being stressed. It's like a big long thick area of It's the casting all the casting. way down yeah, through so to the main. Really. A lot stronger, a lot more lot more structure there, isn't it? A there? lot more structure. So it just takes the stress off the surface. Then what you do, face it, you've got a nice clean face. All this surface is doing is just compressing the gasket. There's yeah. no load on it no at load. all. Yeah. So 
That's one of the main reasons we do it, mate. Yeah, and you only do six because they're the only problematic ones? Uh, they're the more... We have had it where very rarely it can cause an issue in the end, but if you see in the end lot, they are actually deeper in the ends. Yeah. So you don't tend to get an issue in the end. No. Um, the head, what happens is the head, sort of most of the force is from the centre outwards. The end yeah. ones don't tend to suffer as much. But you can do the end ones if you want to. You can study. I've studied, I've done 10 long studs along, you know, a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, a lot of the time we do these blocks. We always do 200 blocks now if we're building them. Customers send them in for us to do them. Um, but it's obviously quite expensive it's about probably another under 150 quid to do the end four on top of that plus 50 quid each for the studs yeah so it's probably another 500 quid's worth of work to so do the yeah, end so a lot more and it's not necessarily necessary not really no there's not really much benefit in doing the 10 for a road car no. um, if you were going all out racing you know big power then well and if you've got the extra money to spend on it and all of that then yeah if they don't mind well, the extra but... cost you know if we were building it we would just do them the only thing is with the 10 um this one here encroaches on the impeller for the water pump because yeah. obviously it goes oh, down here right. okay. so you do have to mod the the impellers of the water pump you have to put a taper on the end oh okay to miss that stud otherwise so you could potentially you, you, well a standard mm. water pump wouldn't fit on no so there's a bit of jiggery pokery so, to be yeah, done. Yeah, okay. Um, but that's a good example of sort of what, what you do. You drill through this top thread there. Yeah. And then you imagine you'd be able to see the stud coming all the way down through this opening. Yeah, you can see that. And into the bottom of the block down there. Exactly, yeah. Um, also with the outer four, there is an extra, you've got to be extra careful because especially on these ones, it tends to the drill when it goes down, tends to want to the casting sort of does this, tapers in. Yeah. So you've got to be very, it's a very slow process with an end mill to go down that side casting to give you enough clearance to get a decent centre drill. You normally find, in the past, we've found blocks that have been done on the, the four outers, you find that they're a bit on, on the, the piss, piss or can be. So it's, a, it's, it's an extra process and it does take quite some time. So it probably takes longer to do these out of four than it does to do all of these inner six. That's right. why it's twice the job, really. Yeah. So you just got to be very careful. And all the castings are slightly different as well. So that's the main reason for it, mate. And that is why you see me do quite a lot of these. Yeah. Just, um, as I say, the price of these 200 blocks are getting quite expensive now. Obviously, with an engine build, if you don't do that um, and it does crack, yes, you can repair it, but then it's an entire engine build again because you can't do it with anything else in the block. It's got to be yeah. completely stripped. Wasted a load of gaskets. May as well just do it while it's apart, isn't it? Yeah, it's a pretty standard thing now for these cozies, isn't it? Yeah. Latte. Enjoying that, mate? Cappuccino, actually. Cappuccino. Fresh, freshly ground from the machine. Only difference is less milk. Mm. Not a big fan of the old dairy these days. Mm. Right, BDA, mate. Well, let's start with the BDA. BD. B, the BD. BD stands for belt driven. Yep. Apparently. It does. Uh, so educated ourselves a little bit on this because I haven't been I haven't really had a lot to do with these BDA engines no. over over the years and I have, this is the first bottom end complete bottom end of I've, I've been involved with so I've been trying to educate m myself on the engine codes yeah after sounding a complete novice on one of the last <laughs> videos and I'm probably not going to sound any more educated on this one so there's going to be plenty of corrections in the comments I'd imagine um, but now we've got it to to bits mate i've been in touch with the customer um and basically this is an rs 1800 mark ii escort yep um it's a a properly proper heritage rally car and it's not going to be used for any sort of competition or anything it's literally going to be not a show car but Hardly just a, a, a time piece that's going to yeah. be driven on and off a trailer moved about so the main thing is you've got to make sure it's running. Everything's sort of hunky dory inside. Um, not as much as if you were going to build a complete race engine, um, but it's got to look really nice on the outside. Yeah. So you get the lovely. gist of what we've got to do. Uh, we've had a look. It's got a fairly trick crank in it. It does, yeah. It's got a billet crank. Um, decent rods in it as standard. It's got a Cosworth pistons. We'll come on to that in a moment. 
The bores, although it's had some water in the bores, they are, it's just sort of watermarks and yeah. there's not much wear at all, to be honest with you. And we're fairly confident that will deglaze on the home, maybe, and sort of get it all. Yeah. So nice, we've, fresh, I spoke to the customer and I've here. said, I've told him what it's like. And I said, look, you know, if you were going to be building a, an engine to compete with, obviously we'd have to look into to boring this, but it's how much money you want to chuck at it for, for what he's going to be using it for. Um, as we always say, I mean, for what he wants it for. <laughs> So <clears throat> we're going to look for, we're going to try and hone half a thou out of these yep. and see if it sort of cleans relatively well Get and then nice maybe go for, a, on there. go for a set of rings in it. Yeah. The main problem with this engine, it's been sitting with moisture and water in there. and Yeah, it's just been sat really, isn't it? Yeah, and I think it's been probably running with some moisture in there and it shouldn't have been or, or it's done rallies in the past and sort of got to its last legs. Yeah. So it needed to come to bits. All the rings are stuck in the grooves. They are. Um, receded in there yeah so we've been we've been sort of having a look at um trying to educate ourselves a little bit mate first of all the block what is it and what the bores measure well they measure 87 mil right which is a very odd size it is now not. apparently doing my own work brian hart back in the day took a i think it was a 1700 and bored it out to 87 mil so that was a, maybe I think it's from '86. So that's a cross flow. Basically, took a cross flow engine, pretty much, or cast his own cross flow, or yeah, um, and took it out to '87, which basically took it out to near enough '1850. Yeah, I think it's like '18 three, three five five or something. Yeah, or and then Ford took on that engine and produced it and called it the RS eighteen hundred in a Mark II. Yeah, that's what I think, but I could be wrong there. Um, so this is 87 mil bore, which is a bit of an odd size. Been onto Burton Power. They don't do anything 87 mil. So they do 83 and a half. The next yeah. one is like 91, which is obviously two litre. Yeah. So this is a bit of a piggy in the middle. Um, so they don't do an 80, they don't do an oversize for the 87 and a half. The only option here really would be to find another set of pistons at 87 which is a bit pointless because those pistons are bloody good yeah they're, they're they are good actually rings are shot uh, yeah. a bit of a weird ring layout it's one mil thick one mil thick and four mil thick from top to bottom which is odd now burton That's do strange. a ring layout the same as that but only an 83 and a half diameter right. so um i have been in touch i've emailed moda tech which are the cosworth agent yeah um, because they are a cosworth piston so hopefully, fingers crossed, they can help with a set of rings. Now the crank, although it's billet crank, it's been built before because the big ends are on plus 10. Mains yes. are on standard. Crank's measured perfect, so we ain't got to grind that. I've got the shells and the gaskets and all that sort of stuff in my basket, ready to order. So we're just pending on the rings at the moment. Um, but yeah, these basically, mate, these, these BD series here, they have just literally... Are took from a cross flow motor, aren't they? Well, it's a cent I think what they what what I made of it was it started as a cross flow bottom end. Yeah. So literally a cast iron block, a literal bottom end from a cross flow. Yeah. That then Cosworth developed a sixteen valve head for. They did. And then they converted it from chain to belt. Obviously, Hence then the BD. overhead cam instead so of. Instead so the, the cross flow engines had a camshaft in the block, yeah. push rods, even the head gasket has still got the holes for, it's the same head gasket, still got the holes for the push rod, but the block doesn't have it. So the original cross flow would be camshaft in the block, yeah. push rods, um, a, a eight valve head, and the, cam, and the camshaft will be driven off the crank with a chain yes. and cog pulleys. So what they, all they've done is they put a blank in there with just literally a drive so, for the oil pump. So that's the blank that goes in there yeah. where the origin, in a cross flow where the original cam would have gone. That's right. And this, uh, what do you call them gears? So that's a, uh, like a scroll gear, isn't it? Yeah. Like that, a... So that lines up in there. Yep. And that drives the oil pump, which is a, it's like a dry sump setup. Yeah, so, so they've utilised where the old camshaft would be. Yeah. Um, 
And going from chain, they've driven the, the camshafts, which are now twin overhead camshafts. Yeah, they've driven it off a belt, hence the BD. Now, oh, if we goodness. head over to my computer over here, mate, excuse the noise. It's actually very similar to this setup on the Lotus Twin Cam. It is, yeah, and I noticed that, a few people commenting on that. Cam. Yeah. It's just, that is literally just a standard cam from one of these, a Kemp block. Yeah. And it's just in there doing nothing. And these push rod holes, same as the BDA, not doing anything. Yeah, so they've just basically cast the block out of aluminium, minus the push rod holes. Same sort of thing, isn't it? It is the same, really. yeah. Now this is here, is, this is a, a random website, but it's got a list here of all the BD engine codes. Oh, very nice. So I suspect a BDA is the original 1600. They even do a BDH, which was a 1300. So that's really- 190 brake horsepower from one of those. Quite a lot. For well, the 16 the valve head, yeah. isn't it? Um, 120 horsepower out of a 1600. Well, that's a group two mine, so that's tuned yeah. to high heaven. So the BD, original BDA is a 1600, which should be in the 1969 Escorts. And then it goes on from here. So whether that engine there is like a BDB, I don't know, because that's a 1700 took to an 18. You've got an 1800 down here, which was the BDT. That was in the RS 200s, which was a turbocharged version. Big laggy motor, that. Isn't it? That's weird, so it's not, well, on here, not listed. But it's almost like it's specific to the RS 1800, isn't it? Yeah. This one is an interesting one. Uh, the, the RS 1700 T turbo 1981, which I didn't realize, but is a BDT, oh. um, but it's, it's slightly less capacity to, than that. But I think that is the, although it's an 81, I think that's a Mark, the Mark three escort BDT they did. Um, oh, right. RS 1700 T, which was a, like a homologation rally Mark three. Right. Okay. Just before the Mark threes come out. But I don't know whether it actually... We're proper getting, getting all nerdy with the Ford stuff now. Really nerdy. Yeah. Getting well into the old Fords, mate. Yeah. Isn't it? Um, and you'll see that later on in the year. Mm. So I still don't... Going by this, I still don't really know exactly what BD yeah, that's, that is. Yeah, because that, that one is an 1835, isn't it? CC. So yeah. that ain't on there. No. But what they call that, I don't know. Whether they just call it a BDA 1800, I don't know. It's very odd. And it's not a BDG, because a BDG is a two litre, isn't it? Yeah, BDG is two litre. Hmm. Which is what we'll be building. <laughs> um, oh, yes, we so will. So I don't know. I'm sure people out there will know and can help us out in the comments. But the main thing is, it's out of the BD series. It's a BD, it's an aluminium block. It's a fairly funky 1800. Rev, rev to high Gen heaven. It's a genuine RS1800 Mark II engine, because um, it's got yep. the three stud exhaust flange on the head. It's an original head, but it's all been tricked out. So yeah, nice bit of kit, and it's just to freshen up. Mm. So I looking think the forward hardest to cracking bit on that's going to be finding some of these bits, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Well, Although the Burton rings, does have most, but... Burton's got a lot of the bits, but the rings at the moment are a little bit hard to find. You're all right for bearings and all that then? That's all no... Yeah, no all the trouble. bearings are just standard stuff, really. Yeah. A lot of it marries up with the cross-flow stuff, yeah. to be honest, the same sizes and stuff like that. Um, you've just got to be a bit careful on, like, the big end um, bearing thicknesses and that. They do, like, a 19, which they call a, um, a narrow journal, which that is. Um, and obviously on the earlier Fords, you've got to be careful of some of the housings. They can be a bigger housing, like a plus 15 right, on the mains. Right, so the journal's the same size, but the housing is bigger or smaller. Or, yeah, yeah, so you've just got to be a bit careful of that and measure that. But that's on the Pintos, I think. Very interesting stuff, mate. It is. Well, guys, thank you very much for watching today's video. Before we go, please check out the link in the description below to our new website that Isaac has built. Have a look at that. Um, we will explain more about that in a future video. I'm looking absolutely fantastic and massive thanks to Isaac. But um, until tomorrow's video, guys, have a great evening. Cheers.